Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing about deploy a full CNCF based observability stack in under five minutes with Tops. So let's get started. What is an observability stack? So observability in general is an ability to infer internal state of the system uh, using the system's external output. So these outputs can be metrics, logs, and traces. So these are the three main uh, data types of observability. So about me, so let me introduce myself. So my name is Vinit Potlaparty. I'm the product manager at Timescale working on observability applications team, uh, primarily on PromScale and TOPS. I'm also the maintainer of open telemetry operator. So uh, if you're already using open telemetry operator, uh, I'm always uh, into hear out your feedback. And uh, if you're using open telemetry collector in Kubernetes cluster, you should definitely try out open telemetry operator. It just eases your uh, uh, deployment and managing of open telemetry collector. Uh, I also enjoy cycling and tasting whiskeys, but not at the same time. So if you are based out of Hyderabad, India, I would definitely uh, love to join for cycling and, and tasting whiskeys. So yeah, you can reach out to me in Twitter or in Slack. So let's see what are the data types in observability. So first comes the metric. So metric is all about uh, trying to understand a state of something uh, using uh, the metric name and the value. So here you can see that metric denotes go GC duration seconds. This is the metric name and the value is the float value 0 0.0034. So uh, it can be anything like you want to uh, uh, get the runtime state of number of go routines running in your application or uh, go GC duration second as per this metric, how much time is your garbage collector taking uh, to process the uh, garbage collection or uh, you can see number of threads and memory being utilized. So metric is all about uh, capturing a runtime state of something in your application. So what are traces? So I love traces, so I'll be a bit biased towards traces. So this is uh, the image you see here is the Eager UI. So it's the visualization of a trace. So if you need to define a trace, so trace is nothing but uh, a request life cycle, basically. So how does your request uh, uh, path flow in your set of microservices and function calls in a particular service? So if you think uh, of an e-commerce site like Amazon, if you're ordering something, so it just uh, the request goes to the cart service payment gateway and then you'll get an acknowledgement saying that the order is successfully placed so this involves uh, the request traveling into multiple microservices and in each microservice it needs to travel into uh, multiple functions so with trace you can understand what's the request life cycle is like and where is the uh, where is the most amount of your time is being spent like the added latency throughput uh, in each and every part by just looking at a trace. So here you can see that um, the duration for this trace to happen was 18.54 milliseconds and uh, total services, uh, this trace has spanned as three services and the depth is eight, which means uh, there are total eight spans. So here you can see uh, this uh, bars, basically it's like a parent span and you have a child span. So you can see there is a span which is consuming 12.5 nine four milliseconds so if you just hover or click on this uh, span uh, this also captures some metadata to understand uh, what is the metadata in this particular uh, request life cycle uh, to analyze uh, further into a trace so these are trace uh, these are traces in the high level so what are logs so i think uh, logs need not need any special introduction because that's the first place where uh, any kind of in uh, instrumentation or observability starts from today so uh, these are uh, uh, logs from the open telemetry collector so basically logs help you to understand the uh, current uh, uh, action being performed in your application so you can log some error debug logs info logs to understand uh, what's exactly is happening uh, uh, in your log. So this this is the first step to your observability. And today we'll not be discussing more about logs. Our primary focus will be on metrics and traces. So let's get back to the title, uh, the full observability stack. Yes, I mean, so I mean in the title, the uh, deploy a full CNCF based observability stack. So yes, it's the full observability stack in under five minutes. Yes. Uh, am I serious? Yes, I'm serious about it. So let's see uh, what we have uh, in this presentation. So it supports complete metrics, it supports complete traces, and logs just needs an external storage system. So you can complement TOPS uh, 
by adding your preferred logging solution to store the logs and introducing tops so the top stands for the observability stack for kubernetes uh, so the definition of tops is tops is a cli tool and a helm chart that aims to make it as easy as possible to install a full observability stack in your kubernetes cluster so uh, you can either use the cli tool or the helm chart to install this observability stack so it's it's totally your preference and if you want to check out more about tops uh, you can check out in this link github.com slash timescale slash tops and let's discuss about uh, what does this tops uh, include so we'll just go layer by layer so first let's discuss the exposition layer so in observability uh, we definitely need some kind of components which which ex which extract some kind of metrics from the targeted uh, uh, resources so here we have node exporter to basically scrape the node metrics from all the nodes running in your Kubernetes cluster. Basically, there are the kubelets there. And you have kube state metrics to scrape the uh, Kubernetes metrics from the kube API server. So this gives you uh, the overall understanding on the state of your Kubernetes cluster. So by default, TOBS includes both node exporter and kube state metrics for you out of the box. And visualization layer. So TOBS includes Grafana. So you can use Grafana for uh, visualizing anything like metrics, logs, traces, anything. And you can use uh, multiple data sources uh, to query uh, with your preferred uh, language like SQL, PromQL, or some uh, filtering mechanism what Agar offers. So we also deploy Agar. So if you're, um, so Agar is the uh, CNCF based uh, tracing solution. So from Agar, we just use the Agar query to visualize the traces. So if you have already using Agar, uh, this is already covered for you. So you can just use the Agar for the visualization as well for traces and collection. So we have seen the exposition. How does the specific targeted metrics get uh, uh, extracted from uh, from the nodes and the kube api server and we have seen the visualization layer for grafana and using agar and here we have the collection layer how does uh, the data gets collected so firstly we have prometheus so prometheus is a graduated cncf project for uh, uh, monitoring and alerting system uh, for your services so uh, i will will not go deep into this projects, but uh, I hope you are already aware of it. Uh, if you are new to Prometheus and Open Telemetry, you should definitely check it out because uh, the observability today without the tools is close to impossible, I should say. So yeah. So Prometheus basically uh, helps you to uh, scrape the metrics from the targets like node exporter, cube state metrics, or uh, your uh, custom business applications, which you have instrumented using Prometheus. So. Uh, that basically scrapes the metrics from them, or you can also for, uh, push the metrics to the Prometheus. And Prometheus also supports the remote write uh, uh, backend. So uh, from Prometheus, we do remote write to the prom scale, which we'll be seeing in the other slides. So it's basically uh, Prometheus is like uh, supports scraping the metrics from the targets. Also, it also supports uh, in-house storage engine. So Prometheus also supports storing it uh, within Prometheus. Or if you would like to store it for longer durations, aggregate from different Prometheus instances, the metrics coming in. So you can use the remote write uh, systems like PromScale. And the o coming to the open telemetry. So open telemetry is the second active project in the CNCF. So uh, after Kubernetes. So open telemetry um, uh, is like, it, it includes so many projects like the instrumentation layer, the collector layer uh, and everything, and even the open telemetry operator. So here though, when I say open telemetry, it's the open telemetry collector, which means uh, if you have instrumented your application with uh, uh, tracing client libraries, you can just forward the traces to the open telemetry. Uh, you can configure the receivers like Agar, Zipkin or OTLP. So all kind of um, tracing instrumentations can uh, can be connected to the open telemetry collector. So all the traces you can forward to the open telemetry. And in open telemetry, you can also configure the exporter. So where we will configure OTLP exporter to forward the traces from open telemetry collector to the uh, prom scale. So open telemetry collector doesn't support uh, storing of um, uh, traces for future visualization and analysis. So this definitely needs a backend to store the traces. And here comes the uh, uh, the prom scale, which is like uh, the the powerful agent of the observability. I should say the powerful component of the observability because 
uh, it helps you to process the data for long uh, and also helps you for long term storage so in observability it's like for every 5 to 10 seconds the data just keeps coming in and gets ingested and you need to process that data and visualize it so when i mean process uh, you like for example you you want to down sample it or you want to correlate it so all this data sits in the prom scale so this is the storage layer for all the observability uh, data we are discussing in this presentation so detailed overview this stack basically we have discussed the exposition layer visualization layer collection layer and the storage layer so here it's uh, we are just listing everything in one slide for the easier understanding so uh, the complete uh, uh, tops basically the helm chart is a combination of multiple helm charts and here you can see we are using kube prometheus the kubernetes monitoring stack basically offered by the prometheus community it includes prometheus alert uh, prometheus to collect the metrics alert manager to fire the alerts so in kube prometheus the alert manager uh, 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 comes with uh, default alerting rules for your kubernetes cluster and node exporter uh, which means if there are any incidents or anomalies or something which is uh, which causes issues in your cluster will be automatically alerted uh, to the alert manager using the out of the box alerting rules offered by kube prometheus and there is grafana to visualize uh, what's going on for visualization and also for alerting you can also alert through grafana and we have node exporter to export the metrics from your nodes and kube state metrics to get metrics from your kubernetes api server and prometheus operator is to manage the life cycle of prometheus and the alert manager so it uses the uh, custom resource definitions to deploy manage prometheus and alert manager so if you are using prometheus in kubernetes cluster you should definitely check out kube prometheus because it comes with prometheus operator it eases the management of prometheus for you in the kubernetes uh, world and the prom scale uh, to store metrics and traces for long term a uh, long term storage and allows you to analyze analyze the data which is stored using both promql and sql and prom lens is a tool to build and analyze promql queries with ease so uh, basically uh, many users may not be aware of promql or will have hard time building some complex queries with promql so prom lens is a tool which helps you to build this queries with much more ease so by default tops includes prom lens to make your uh, uh, life easier while uh, working with promql queries and we have open telemetry operator to manage the life cycle of open telemetry collector so uh, same as the prometheus operator uh, the Pro open telemetry operator also manages the open telemetry collector using the custom resources so so it just makes the installation managing upgrading everything easier with the operator and in open telemetry operator recently we uh, we have also added support for auto instrumentation which means you just create the instrumentation cr and you just need to add annotations for your deployment saying that inject java true and then uh, automatically the open telemetry uh, operator injects the sidecar for your java node.js and python applications so without any code changes you can achieve the auto instrumentation to your um, applications using the open telemetry operator auto instrumentation feature so you should definitely check it out it's really really interesting and you can just get the observability uh, traces uh, like the observability uh, uh, for your business applications without zero code changes so the traces just come uh, uh, are just exposed and the sidecar just forwards them to the open telemetry collector yep and we have agar query to visualize the traces so uh, you can either use grafana or agar query it's just a preference and a choice to visualize traces and what is prom scale so let's see uh, the complete overview of PromScale. So the PromScale is an observability backend powered by SQL. So it supports unparalleled insights. When I say unparalleled insight, uh, it, it uses one database to store all the observability data. Here it's the metrics and traces. You can also store your business data in the same system, which means uh, you have all the data sitting in one database and you can correlate uh, uh, all these different uh, uh, data types uh, at a specific window uh, in time so it just gives you the ability to uh, do all kind of uh, analytics and processing in a specific uh, time window so sql just offers anything so the sky is the limit for you if you are using sql as the query language 
and it has a proven foundation so it's built on petabyte scale foundation of time scale db and postgres sql uh, which means it also supports advanced database features like high availability uh, replication and compression and many more so you are fully covered uh, for the reliability of the database layer and it's easy to get started and use so trust me this is the major uh, uh, differentiator for the prom scale because uh, uh, you need not worry about how to run manage this uh, observability stack or the uh, long term storage system whereas with other solution you should be running tens of microservices installation upgrade scaling them is like very uh, uh, just uh, causes so much of problem for you you should have a dedicated sre team whereas with prom scale all you have to do is uh, just run a prom scale connector a stateless one and the database itself so and it's also easy to integrate with grafana prometheus open telemetry and all the tools you know and love because uh, today we support uh, all the major uh, observability uh, open source solutions with prom scale and here comes the prom scale architecture so on the left you can see there is open uh, prometheus which can do remote write and remote read from the prom scale connector and we have open telemetry uh, which uses the open telemetry collector which uses the otlp grpc endpoint to ingest the traces to the prom scale connector if you are not using open telemetry collector uh, you can directly also instrument your application using open telemetry client libraries and directly forward the traces from your application to the prom scale connector it's totally possible and coming to the prom scale itself so prom scale is a combination of two components one is the prompt scale connector which is stateless and the other one is the time scale db database so all you need is just two components running and you're fully covered for the storage of all your observability data you need not need multiple systems or two different uh, stacks to manage traces metrics and everything so in prompt scale all the data sits in one uh, system and it's prompt scale and coming to the visualization layer we have eager ui to visualize the traces from the prom scale connector and uh, we have grafana to query uh, metrics using prom scale from the prom scale connector and uh, on the side note uh, prom scale connector has 100% compatibility uh, support for prom scale queries and you can use grafana to query uh, uh, using sql from directly from the time scale db so you can use sql for all the data which is stored in the time scale db and any tool that speaks sql should just work out of the box with the time scale db so this is the visualization layer uh, for prom scale and if you want to do uh, uh, check out more on the prom scale feel free to uh, open this link tsdb.co/promscale and let's discuss about what are the features offered by prom scale in the high level so these are uh, 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 just the top level features we have many more getting cooked and developed than the prom scale today and this just this list just grows in the coming days so we have full sql support and analytic support on your observability data which means uh, all the data which you are sending to prom scale can be queried with uh, uh, full sql support and you can also do analytics on them using the analytical functions offered by time scale db and uh, we uh, the storage support for metrics and traces so as i told uh, uh, for other solutions in the market or the other open source solutions it's about uh, you need two different systems to uh, store and process metrics and for traces so whereas with prom scale all you need is one system the prom scale itself for uh, storing metrics and traces so it's easy to run and manage for you and we also um, offer uh, high availability for prom scale so with prometheus you can just use the external labels of prometheus to leverage high availability from prom scale and even multi tenancy is um, offered in prom scale so you can use the tenant ids if you have multiple prometheus instances which are uh, sending uh, metrics to the prom scale you can just attach them with the tenant id and the data is just separated out between uh, tenants we also support exemplars uh, in prom scale so if you have instrumented exemplars with prometheus uh, client client libraries in your application so uh, just prometheus scrapes the exemplars and does a remote write to the prom scale and we just store it for the future analysis and the continuous aggregates for prom scale uh, for metrics which means uh, if you are already using time scale db we should already be knowing continuous aggregates so continuous aggregates are the down sampling of of time scale db so it's much more than down sampling much more accurate and all so 
it's uh, we do support continuous aggregates for the metric stored and rom scale so this is another interesting feature per metric retention so uh, many users uh, love it basically if you have uh, hundreds of metrics being stored in rom scale so you are only interested in few metrics to be stored for one year and you want the other metrics to be stored for 90 days or uh, 120 days and 180 days based on your preference so you can just apply per metric retention on on per metric basis so uh, the metrics which you are interested in to store for long term gets stored for a long period time and the other metrics based on the retention policies gets dropped based on your preference so uh, that's totally possible with prom scale and you can also ingest your own time series data alongside prometheus data so uh, if you have uh, a time series data from your legacy monitoring solutions or from other uh, sources all you have to do is change this time series data into a json uh, a schema uh, which is uh, offered by promscale it's in promscale docs so all you have to do is uh, convert the data into the uh, promscale uh, json uh, uh, streaming uh, request format and all you have to do is just do a post request to promscale and all this uh, time series data of yours will be stored alongside prometheus data which means it gives you a power of querying uh, this time series data using both promql and sql so that's totally possible so if you have any legacy systems and metrics uh, should just try out this grpc streaming endpoint of promscale and this is the internals of top so we have seen what's promscale is so now let's get back to the top side of the house so we have top cli which basically installs the tops helm chart into the kubernetes cluster and tops helm chart is the uh, combination of all the helm charts the kube prometheus prom scale time scale db and open telemetry operator helm chart so tops is basically a super helm chart which combines all the helm, helm charts under the hood and this is the tops uh, architecture uh, uh, it looks complex but trust me uh, just one command away from deploying the stack and configuring all the uh, components so the tops does all the heavy lifting for you it's pre uh, uh, pre configured and pre baked for you all you have to do is just deploy it and start using the stack and here comes the kube prometheus stack you see the box here it includes kube state metrics node exporter alert manager prometheus and the prometheus operator to manage the kube prometheus stack the grafana and here comes the prom scale itself the prom scale connector and the time scale db and we have prom lens to help you build prom scale queries and here comes the tracing stack we have otel operator uh, the otel operator has a dependency on cert manager so we do deploy cert manager for open telemetry operator and here is the open telemetry collector and agar query to visualize the traces in agar so if you are uh, business applications are instrumented for with traces all you have to do is uh, Uh, configure the open telemetry collector as the endpoint to forward the traces and your services will forward the traces to the otel collector and the otel collector will forward them to the prom scale and here comes uh, the prometheus so uh, the prometheus also scrapes uh, the slash metrics endpoints from all your services which means it just uh, scrapes all the metrics from your applications and the metrics from prometheus gets forwarded to the prom scale so this is how the stack works and it's all uh pre configured for you and it's the demo time let's pray for the demo gods for the demo to work successfully so here is the kubernetes cluster so i'm just doing kubectl get pods yeah i just have the kube system pod so the cluster is just empty and uh, let's see the top cla what top cla has to offer for us and tops basically has the sub commands as grafana to do grafana operations like grafana get password change password port forwarding and helm basically to uh, do helm operations like show values uh, for uh, your uh, tops helm chart as the as the core component of uh, tops architecture is helm so we do have some helm operations for you to have ease is with uh, dealing with top cli and we do support inst installation of observability stack using the install command and we have eager to perform eager operations like port forward and we have metrics to do metric operations like uh, applying per metric retention directly from the cli and uh, configuring the chunk interval uh, for the time scale db for metrics and the port forwarding for time scale db prom scale prom lens grafana prometheus eager 
the local host so all the components which are deployed by tops can be port forwarded to your local host using this port forward sub command and we have prometheus for prometheus operation prom lens prom scale and time scale db for time scale db operation with time scale db sub command you can do get password change password of the database and you can also do connect which means you can just uh, uh, get into the PSQL prompt right from your shell. So you don't need to SSH into the pod of the database. All you have to do is just do TOBS um, uh, timescale DB connect and it just connects to the database for you. So how cool is that? So you don't need to uh, find the timescale DB uh, pod and try to understand what is the secret it's mounted to. And then you need to uh, capture the secret, which is uh, uh, password string in the secret, which is base64 encoded. You need to decode it and then you need to do PSQ. Uh, you need to uh, take, you need to do exec into the pod and then apply the password. So it's a bit cumbersome. So all you have to do is uh, just do uh, tops time scale db connect and it just gets connected. And it's the same with um, uh, uh, other commands as well. It just makes your uh, uh, life easier while uh, managing the observability stack. And let's install the stack for you. Okay, let me do Quebec TL get CRDs. I just wanted to check is my cluster uh, in the state I expect it to be. So yes, that's the way I want it to be. And let's do tobs install. So I'm just doing tobs install iPhone iPhone tracing because today the tracing support in prom scale is in beta. So in, next, in in few weeks we'll be announcing tracing GA, uh, which means by default top should also support uh, tracing installation, all the tracing components installation. So at the moment you need to explicitly enable it by entering iPhone iPhone tracing flag. So I'm just doing enter. So the installation is running, my fingers crossed for the demo to work. And it asks you for the confirmation of the cert manager is required to deploy open telemetry. Do you want to install the cert manager? So as I told, the open telemetry operator has a dependency with cert manager. And as the cert manager doesn't exist in the cluster, it's asking for a confirmation. If the cert manager already exists in the cluster, it just skips the installation of the cert manager. So I'm just doing yes and uh, I just process the installation. So in the meantime, we can just see from my previous installation, uh, uh, installations, what does the stack actually contain? So here you can see that um, I have uh, another stack which was running. So uh, I'll just show you what are the components which the stack deploys by the time it gets deployed. So uh, now the time is 6.14 PM in my time. So let's see, does the stack gets deployed in less than five minutes as the title says. So here we have uh, time scale DB, the pod. Uh, for the database and we have prom scale and we have the prom lens and we have the prometheus node exporter so as this is the three node cluster the node exporter is deployed as the daemon set so you have three pods as the node exporter and this is the open telemetry collector and the cube state metrics prometheus operator eager and you have grafana db to uh, uh, pre-configure the dashboards and users in the grafana and this is the grafana um, uh, pod itself and we have some demo services to show uh, to generate some traces for this demo and we have alert manager here and this is the cert manager which is uh, deployed for the open telemetry operator so this, the installation is going on till then what we'll do is we'll just uh, uh, i just wanted to show you a few dashboards so just give me a second so the installation is happening. That's waiting for the pods to get started. And, and, okay. So I have another environment with all the dashboards, which I wanted to show you using SQL command. So these dashboards are not uh, uh, pre-configured in the tops at the moment, but in the future releases, we will also pre-configure this dashboards for the, uh, for the, for the tops by default out of the box, you'll have this dashboards uh, configured for you. So before we jump into this dashboards, I want to check uh, the state of the cluster. So it's getting installed. So we'll give a few more minutes for the stack to be up and running. So in the meantime, let's uh, just check, uh, 
what are this dashboard so i have prompt scale with sql here and uh, you can see uh, uh, basically uh, these are the dashboards built on top of traces so we have uh, traces coming from a hipster shop demo applications uh, so these traces are stored into the prompt scale and this uh, we are using sql to query all this uh, data on top of traces for you so you can see the p99 latency uh, for all the traces in an average is 173 milliseconds and the throughput is 6.82 requests per second and there is no error rate interestingly which is great and we have p99 response time here uh, as a uh, as p99 response time for uh, each uh, service you see here we have a recommendation service currency service email service and if you just hover on it you can see that uh, the cart service has uh, uh, some uh, like the response time is ranging to 2 seconds which is not good so this is the p99 response time and here you can see the heat map for the trace duration uh, for um, all the uh, traces aggregated so this is one dashboard I wanted to show you. So in the meantime, we'll just check the status of the stack. So, yep. So at 618 now, so you can think it as four minutes from the time we have deployed it, uh, deployed the stack. So let's do Quebec TL get pods. So still the uh, deployment is, uh, the observability stack is deployed in four minutes. So the Grafana is in crash loop back off. Let's give it 10 more seconds for it to uh, start up and running. It's dependent on the time scale DB. But in the meantime, we can see that uh, we have TimeScale DB deployed, PromScale, PromLens, uh, the Prometheus node exporter, the open telemetry collector, the cube state metrics, and the Prometheus operator. So yeah, you can, now you can see that uh, tops Grafana, uh, the pod is up and running. So, yep. So we'll just use, um, bin tops grafana get password command to get the password from the using the top cli and you can see the password is here and uh, we can just do port forward grafana port forward so the grafana is uh, uh, port forwarded to the localhost 8080 so let's copy this password which is randomly generated by tops and let's do localhost 8080 okay so we have admin and then the password which we copied and we are logged in so this is the grafana and we have pre-configured dashboards uh, and tops using the cube prometheus which internally uses the kubernetes mixins so let's navigate through this dashboard so these are the dashboards which are pre-configured by cube prometheus so you can just uh, get into node exporter nodes to understand what is the metric. So as the stack is just uh, five minutes old, so the data is just getting uh, filled in. So here you can see all the CPU usage load average for the node. So let's give it some time. And in the meantime, we can check the data sources. So in tops, uh, by default, the data sources are configured for you out of the box. Here you see the Prometheus data source, which is uh, configured to use uh, prom scale. So here we have, uh, from scale uh, to query PromQL queries as the Prometheus data source. And we have from scale SQL, which is the Postgres SQL data source to query using SQL from the time scale DB. And we have from scale tracing. So uh, it's an Agar data source to query traces from prom scale. So th these are the three data sources which are pre-configured for you using tops. And now uh, we can just go to the other data uh, prometheus dashboard to understand what is the data so here you can see that these are the prometheus stats uptime and everything for this things and here you can see the target sync target so the, it says uh, it has more than 750 targets at the moment so it's 810 to be precise and average scrape interval is one inter one minute and the scrape failures there is no data yet and it's appending samples head series so the head series is 59,000 at the moment. So these are some metrics. So all these dashboards are out of the box available for you if you are using tops. And this is the Grafana visualization from the tops which we have deployed and how you have also seen how we have um, uh, 
captured the password using the top CLI. And let's get back to the SQL dashboards which I've built for this demo in another environment. So here you can see that um, uh, the service performances. So even these dashboards are built on top of traces using SQL as the query language. So coming to the first panel here, you see operations with highest error rate in last 24 hours. So this is the service name and this is the operation. So in front end service, the checkout service is having uh, 2,121 spans with errors and the total spans are 3,083 total spans and the error rate is 55,000, 55%, 55.4% the error rate is. So each and every operation uh, shows the error rates uh, per uh, API here per operation and the operations with highest rate errors in the last uh, 24 hours. So uh, this is uh, what the data is. So the front end card checkout uh, has the 55.5% uh, uh, errors. As we have seen here, it's the same error rate uh, for the same operation here. And uh, you can see all the list of uh, APIs which have the error rates. And here you can see the slowest operation in the last 24 hours. So the front end service has P99 latency of 28.9 seconds, which is not good. And uh, here we also have the P999 latency. It's the same again. And for the product ID also, it's the same. So the P99 is almost 30 seconds, so which is not good. And here the slowest operations in the last 24 hours. So the health check for card GRPC service is taking approximately 1 point, like 1.64 seconds. So this is the uh, slash check is taking this much time. So which is not good. So it just gives you all this kind of anomalies. And for example, we can just jump into the SQL query we use to build this dashboard. It's as easy as that. So this is a nested SQL query. You're just doing select and then you're applying to care. Like you need to do some small casting uh, of for data to visualize in uh, Grafana. And there's another nested query here. So all you, it's just 10 lines of SQL query for you to get this kind of insights. And Let's jump into another interesting uh, dashboards I have here to demo and the service dependencies. So you want to understand what, what are the dependencies for a service. So you have a client service as front end checkout service and they are dependent on ad service here. And basically uh, the front end client is calling the ad service 2,715 times and the specific API is get ads. So the total execution time is 1.03 seconds. So how cool is it? You just know the service dependencies for each and every application uh, by, by processing the traces. And here you can see another interesting thing. The front end is calling the product catalog 20,000 requests. So uh, this is definitely not great. So you should, uh, you should definitely dig into it by looking at the number of requests uh, the product catalog service is getting. So it just gives you this uh, deeper insights into your applications. How is how many invocations are happening per uh, API and what is the client, the source where this requests are getting uh, 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 invoked from. And this is the heat map of the trace duration, which I've seen in other uh, other uh, dashboard. And here is the slowest traces. So here you can see the start time, the trace ID, the service name and the operation. So uh, basically the slowest uh, trace duration is from the card service and the duration is 1.98 seconds and these are the resource tags. So we'll just see what is the SQL query used to get this. So the SQL query is not more than eight lines, I should say uh, here. So it's just the select. So you're doing select of start time and replacing the trace ID special characters with an empty string. That's the trace ID here. And we are doing the service name, selection, span name, duration second. And we're converting the resource tags into the JSONB for easier visualization here in the table. And we are doing from. So there's a span table. We are just querying all this data from the span table where uh, parent span ID is null. So basically a trace is nothing but a parent span itself when we when we understand the trace uh, uh, data model. So we are just saying that uh, capture all the uh, parent spans because they denote the traces and just limit them for 100. So these are the top 100 slowest traces you see in this table. So it's as easy as you see it. So the SQL way of querying your observability is like uh, 
a new approach and it's really easy and the sky is the limit you can correlate and you can build this kind of dashboards uh, as per your requirements so it's just easy and it just offers a uh, tremendous value for you to understand your services and yep these are the three dashboards i wanted to show you and uh, these all these dashboards are again a note uh, that uh, are built on top of traces using sql as the query language and they are querying directly from the uh, uh, time scale db and so we can just check the dashboard so now the data is coming in you can see that uh, uh, as the stack is running for last 10 minutes here so the data is just filling in uh, from the stack and to make sure that prompt scale uh, the, the tops which we have installed is it ingesting the uh, is it ingesting the metrics and traces all you have to do is just do prompt scale and check the logs of it so here you can see So again, here you can see that uh, it's ingesting basically 4,500 samples per second. So these are the info logs of the prompt scale uh, stating that, hey, this is the ingestion of samples I'm doing at the moment. And uh, just as the final demo, we'll just uh, uh, deploy the uh, sample microservices so that we can see how does the, how does the traces, Okay, traces apps. Okay, so I'm just deploying a bunch of microservices which basically uh, forward emit the traces to the open telemetry collector, and the open telemetry collector forwards these traces to the prompt scale. And then you can see in the prompt scale logs that it's ingesting uh, X number of samples per second. So this might take a couple of minutes as the pods needs to get up and running. So I think they're almost up and running. So let's do the logs. Just let's tail the logs of prom skill. So here you can see that it says it's already ingesting spans like five spans, eight spans per second. So uh, even the traces are getting ingested into the prom skill now as we just deployed uh, uh, the uh, demo microservices. Here you can see two uh, two thousand samples and. Uh, all the samples and spans which are getting ingested so here we see as high as 231 spans getting ingested here so yep 231 spans so yep prom scale is now ingesting both uh, metrics and traces for you yep so this is the uh, demo i had and thanks to the demo gods as my demo just worked as expected And to learn more, you can find all those resources, so slides and resources. So this link is uh, not correct. It's, uh, it's my bad. Sorry for that. So it's a PromCon talk uh, link I just added here. I should replace this. So, but you can find the uh, slides in the description. I'll just share the slides with in the CNCF webinar. And uh, the observability stack for Kubernetes can be found. Basically, you can get find the GitHub repo at uh, tsdb.co slash tops github and prom scale github repo at slash time scale slash prom scale and you can also find the uh, prom scale blog post in this link and if you are interested to discuss more about tops in prom scale join us in time scale db slack hash prom scale uh, currently we are also rethinking the tops architecture to support gitops and infrastructure as code so each enterprise has their own way of deploying components into their infrastructure so if you have any thoughts suggestions feedback on tops uh, you should definitely reach out to us on slack we would love to have a quick call with you to understand your use cases and requirement to better shape the future of, of tops so uh, tops will have um, uh, some architectural revamping and some changes in the near future which should make it uh, even more uh, powerful and easier to deploy the observability stack so now you just see it as one command away but now we will expand this ease of deploying into different architectures and infrastructures like the GitOps infrastructure as code and different ways. So we are still exploring that side of TOBS. So your feedback is definitely valuable for us. 
uh, you can reach out to us and timescale db slack so i'll just show you uh, quickly uh, the tops github repo so if you are interested to check it out do check out the tops github uh, so here we have the tops project and uh, quick start getting guides how you can install the CLA and get the stack up and running. It's the same command which we have ran uh, to get the tops up and running. And uh, we have prompt skill here. So, so uh, here is the prompt skill repo for you. So you can learn more about uh, prompt skill here. And we do have uh, time scale uh, docs. So if you are interested in getting started with PromScale, you should definitely check out the PromScale docs on the TimescaleDB website. So it gives you more details about PromScale architecture and also some uh, high level information on how is the schema designed in the relational database uh, for observability data and installing tops also has all kind of examples for you. And uh, just a uh, heads up that we recently launched the PromScale logo and I'm very excited about this logo. So I just wanted to share it with you. So you'll be seeing more uh, PromScale and this logo in all the future talks in CNCF webinars and other uh, platforms. And you can also check out the timescale, uh, the blog post from the observability team at timescale. Uh, uh, and timescale website. So basically the timescale uh, website holds all interesting blog posts on the timescale DB and observability. So you can also check out some uh, crypto related blog posts. How is that crypto data uh, stored in timescale DB? And if you are interested into the observability, so you need to check out this filter observability in uh, blog. So here uh, we recently published how to turn time scale cloud into observability backend with prom scale should definitely check out. So it says about how you can install tops and prom scale uh, by powering all data into the time scale cloud. So all the storage layer is, will be offloaded from your Kubernetes cluster to the time scale cloud. Uh, so it just works out of the box for you. So this is the architecture. So the, you will have all the tops components in your cluster, the prom scale connector, but just the database will be offloaded to the time scale cloud and it will be running in time scale cloud. So it offers all the major features like ease of operations for you, scaling the compute disk and everything. So Timescale DB has uh, some amazing features. So we do have 30 day free trial if you are interested to check out the Timescale Cloud uh, for uh, storing all the observability data. And uh, do check out this blog post if you are interested in getting started with TOBS and Timescale Cloud. And there are other blog posts here as well if you are interested, like how to downsample Prometheus metrics in PromScale and what are traces and how SQL helps you in uh, getting the deeper insights from your traces. It discusses about the dashboards, which I have demoed today and simplifying the Prometheus monitoring for your entire organization using PromScale. And there are many blog posts like that here for the observability. So do check out if you are interested. And uh, And we are hiring. So if you are interested to join Timescale, uh, both in the Timescale DB, the database side of the house, the Timescale Cloud, or in the observability group. So feel free to check out our careers or reach out to us in Slack. So we would love to have you as a part of our Timescale uh, team. And thank you. Uh, see you in the future talks from PromScale and Timescale.